Well, welcome everybody. Uh, I'm sure, sure you uh, all here have uh, some stress or no stress. We'll see. We'll see. And a um, little bit of background about myself. Um, my master's degree from San Jose State is in sports psychology. And um, I have a pretty good background in uh, stress reduction and anxiety. My master's thesis was on anxiety. And so um, I also was a person or one of the instructors that helped write the curriculum for the stress reduction course here at the college. And so I have some background in it. I've been coaching for, well, probably 30 years. And um, so there's a lot of stress that comes along with ath athletics. And, and also to prepare for athletic competition, you have to learn stress reduction techniques. And so um, hopefully today I'll, we'll introduce some new techniques to you um, as far as stress reduction, not just through exercise, but also through exercise. And then today we'll also uh, have a little bit of activity. Okay, so I'm glad that you guys all wore shoes for that activity. So that was good. Okay, okay so I want to start out today talking a little bit about uh, <clears throat> what is stress, how it affects you, and get some knowledge base about what stress is and how it affects our bodies, okay? And then how we can reduce it. So stress can be a physical or psychological, okay? So physical, um, what would be a physical stress on your body? Anybody think of one? Weight. What? Weight. Weight, exactly. Weight, too much weight on your body can be a physical stress, and so that creates stress on the bones, on the joints, and over time, that tends to break down our joints and our bones, and so we would have some problems later on. So remember, this is all time, time elapsed stuff, okay? A typical definition is a demand made upon the adaptive capabilities of the mind and the body. The key word there is adaptive, okay? Um, for instance, another type of stress that's on your body that we don't even feel is gravity. Gravity is on our bodies every day. We are used to it because we live here on this earth and it's part of the earth. And so, but our bodies have adapted to gravity so that we can sustain life here. What would happen if gravity went away? What would happen to us? What happens to, do, do you know what happens to astronauts when they go up in space and there's no gravity up there? They begin to what's called float. They begin to what's called atrophy. Atrophy is where your muscles actually start to deteriorate or diminish because we don't have any resistance. And so when you go into the weight room and you, lose, you use weights, that creates a resistance on your body. That resistance builds muscle, correct? And so without the gravity, we wouldn't have any resistance on our body. So we would have a hard time sustaining this type of body. We would be much thinner, maybe no muscle at all, maybe just bones. We'd be a lot different looking people if we didn't have gravity. So through our adaptive system in our bodies, and we have adaptations to everything we do in life, we are able to handle that kind of stress. The difficult thing, though, with adaptation is we don't know that we are under stress. And so in a psych psychological stress, like taking a test, test anxiety, your boss tells you you've got to do something, you have... Uh, money pressures, you know, financial situations, things like that. All these stresses add up in our life and our bodies adapt to it. And so stress is dangerous because we don't know that we are even under stress, okay? That's the danger part of stress, okay? So in my talk today, we want to be proactive, meaning that we want to take charge in our life so that we are always active in our life fighting stress. Even though we might not feel we're stressed, we want to stay proactive in fighting stress. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, so stress is an adaptation of the survival fight, flight or fight syndrome. You probably have heard that in the past. Many, 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 you know, when we were like, like first beginning human civilization, we weren't living in houses. And so we were living out, you know, on the plains and caves and things like that. And we weren't always the hunters. Sometimes we were hunted. And so we had a choice. Do we stay and fight or do we run away? Okay. But in either case, we're doing something physical. 
We're either going to fight and be physical or we're going to run away and be physical. So we reduce the stress hormones in our body by being physical. Okay? Today's world, we have stress in our life. So we have, you know, like I said, financial presses, job pressures, family pressures, relationship pressures, things like that. And those pressures are stress. But in today's world, we're not fighting or running. We're sitting and resting and being stressed. And so what happens then, our stress hormones build up in our body because we never release them. We never get rid of them, at least not quickly. And so those pressures build up over time, and those hormones build up over time, and that creates what's called chronic stress. And chronic stress isn't good for us because it creates a lot of physical problems. Okay, so let's look at some of those. Um, so here's the stress response. So elevated hormones in the body. So when you have a stress, you have some different kinds of hormones. And I'm not really going to go into detail about what those hormones are. I'll say them real quickly. One's called cortisol. You've probably heard of that. One is called epinephrine, which is another word called adrenaline. And one's called norepinephrine, which is the opposite of, of adrenaline. Okay? So as we get stressed in our life, whether you're a student or working in the workplace, we have increased levels of hormones. Our heart rate goes up. Okay? If you think about this fight or flight syndrome, you think that when you want to fight, you want to have a high heart rate because you want to be active and ready to go. Okay? Our blood pressure and volume goes up. Blood pressure is dangerous, and I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Okay? Increased cognition and awareness. We're much more alert because we, if we're going to get, we're going to get eaten, we want to be aware of it and get away from it quickly. Okay? So we, we want to get away quick. Our digestive system shuts down. Now, why is that? Because if you're in the fight or flight syndrome, if you're either going to fight or you're going to run, do you need to be eating? Not really. So our digestive system comes down. Okay? Salivation stops. Anybody get stressed and you get dry mouth? You ever do a public speech or something like that and you go, oh man, I can't talk because my mouth is very dry? Well, that's because you're under stress. Okay? Our immune system shuts down. That's dangerous because what happens when your immune system shuts down? you're more susceptible to diseases and illnesses, okay? And then adrenaline levels increase, okay? We kind of talked about that as well. And adrenaline actually is what creates that heart rate going really fast when your heart starts to beat really quick, okay? So over time, exhaustion finally sets in, the stress response continues, and if the levels of stress hormones are not returned to a homostatic state, they're not. So if they're not returned, then we create what's called chronic stress. Okay, so chronic stress contributes to many health issues. This is a short list, you guys, very short list. I mean, I could have had, if we had more time, I could have a list of 50 things on here. But cardiovascular problems, that's the number one problem in, in America is cardiovascular disease. That's the first thing that will kill you, okay? Not to talk badly, but <laughs> that's the first thing that, that's, that's the number one killer in America, okay? High blood pressure goes along with heart disease. Increased levels of cholesterol and fat in the body. So that also goes along with heart disease. So the more stress you have, the more your body collects cholesterol. We know that cholesterol is not good. We're always trying to fight that cholesterol, right? Okay, sexual dysfunction, muscle tension, headaches, backaches, muscle pain. Anybody get headaches, backaches? Headaches, headaches yeah. Headaches are a common, common ailment from stress, okay? Um, Lowered immune system, we talked about that. Digestive disorders, we kind of talked about that. Anybody get that acid reflux where you get up that up in here? Not 100% due from stress, but stress is a contributor to that. Okay? Um, depression and anxiety, and then mood disorders. Anybody moody? Okay? <laughs> there was no. <laughs> okay? So, I mean, I've been moody in the past, you know, and you wonder why. You go, why am I so moody today? And it's because we're not aware of the stress that's affecting our bodies, okay? So do we need stress? Yes. We actually do need stress, okay? So without it, we'd be unproductive and most likely cease to exist. We talked about that gravity. But on the psychological side of it, if your instructor tells you, hey, you have a paper due on November 12th. 
Okay, all of a sudden, that's stress, isn't it? But all of a sudden, now you're going to become productive. So you got to get that paper done before November 12th. So stress, in many ways, is a real positive in our life. It doesn't have to be a negative, okay? It comes down to your perception. I'm going to talk about perception in a minute, okay? Too little, we become bored, tired, and happy. So any, any time, like maybe during summertime, when you guys are out of school, you're sitting around at your house, you're not doing anything for a month, you kind of get bored and tired, don't you? Okay? All right. Too much stress, we become burned out, exhausted, irritable, and prone to illness. So if we have too much stress, then yes, we get to have some, we're going to be irritated. And then... Uh, with the right amount of stress, we are more pr productive, energetic, happy, creative, and healthier overall. So stress is a positive. It's not a negative. So right today, I hope everybody in, the, in this room can start thinking of stress as a positive rather than a negative. But we do need to control it. We do need to manage it. Okay? Dangerous stress. We talked about this, basically. In many instances, we do not even know that we are distressed or stressed. Um, due to our body's capability of adaptation. So through the adaptation process, we're not aware that we're actually stressed. Okay? And like I said earlier when we first started talking, you don't know that. And so the danger is those hormonal levels will stay high and create that high blood pressure and the, and the cardiovascular disease and the high cholesterol and all those things we talked about. Okay? Over time, that's called acute stress. Over time, that would become what's called chronic stress. Okay, chronic stress is a long-lasting stress. The one thing I like to say before uh, I go any farther, though, in a, in a talk like this, I know that you all are here hoping to reduce stress, but remember, it takes time. Time is the key, and time is important. Just like it takes time to become chronically stressed, it takes you just the same amount of time to reduce that stress. So we want to, like I said, be proactive and continue to work on our exercise and continue to work at trying to reduce our stress over time. So what are some potential stressors? Anybody have any potential stressors? Anybody have a stress that, something that in your life that causes you stress? What do you got? Name a name a few for me. Money. Money. Financial problems. Okay, what else? Learn English, okay? So we'll, 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 call it, um, we'll call it student, student uh, problems, problems as a student, okay? okay? What else? Anybody else? Relationships. Excellent. That's a big one. Relationships in, in everyone's life, whether it's family, whether it's your boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, uh, we all have some sort of relationship. It could be a relationship with yourself even, okay? All right, so uh, what else? What's that? Worry. Yes, worry. And so worry would come under anxiety, I believe, and just being anxious in general. A big one for me, time management. Time management is, is brutal. Okay? I don't live here. I, I live over the hill. And so um, coming to work every morning, when I have my, I usually don't have morning class. If I do this semester, boy, I, I actually have, my first day uh, this semester, I was late the very first day. And uh, I had to call my department chair and tell him, hey, I'm going to be late. There's traffic. I can't make it. So my, I didn't make the right amount of time. I had the right amount of time to get to my class. So I made an adjustment. I leave two hours early now, so I don't have that kind of stress. But I was really stressed out on that first day. Okay? All right. So let's look at a few potential stressors. Time management, that's number one I put up there right away because that's the one m most for me. Okay? Personal expectations. Um, you all have expectations about what you want to do with your life. That is a stress. Okay? Do you want, you want to be successful? Okay, do you want to make money? Do you want to be a CEO? Do you want to be successful as a student? Those are all personal uh, expectations. Family expectations. What do your families think of you? That's also an expectation for a lot, uh, stress for a lot of us. Okay? Employment and finances. We talked about finances. School pressures. We talked about school pressures. Living arrangements. Sort of with, again, that family thing. Okay? And it could be roommates. Anybody living out of the home with roommates? Roommates can be really stressful. Okay? They don't do the dishes, but you do. That can be a problem, huh? All right. Uh, relationships. We discussed that. 
Physical health issues, that's also a stress, okay? So if you're not feeling well, that can be a real stress. And those two things kind of snowball. You feel worse and you get more stressed, and you feel worse and you get more stressed. So that's a hard one to get out of. Uh, environmental stressors, okay? Uh, information overload, that's a big one for today um, as far as uh, having computers, telephones, texting, you know, I, I've, I decided to just stop trying. <laughs> I, I, I can text. That's about all I can do right now. <laughs> all right. Um, information, we did that. Choices. Choices are always stressful. So uh, whether it's a choice about being a student, which college to go to, which job to choose, what field to go into. I know that when I was a student, I had difficulty figuring out what I wanted to do for my career. What was I going to do? And that was a big choice. Okay. And then daily hassles. We all have daily hassles. Okay? Those can all be minor stressors, but hopefully not major stressors. Okay? Any questions on what potential stressors could be? And this list, again, can be much longer. Okay? So perception. So we talked about a lot of potential stressors just now. It really comes down to your perception of what you think is a stressor or not. Okay? Someone else... Um, Making a choice about their career might find that very easy. I know I'm going to be a doctor. I know I'm going to be a lawyer. I know that I'm going to whatever it is. They, they already have that choice made, so that stress really isn't a stress for them. Others, though, might feel very stressed about what they're going to do with their career and their life. Okay? So once again, perception is really important about how stress affects you. Okay? If I could tell you anything in today's, class, in today's talk, Perception is the number one thing for you all to start trying to get in the right perception. <laughs> Meaning that um, keeping, keeping things simple, okay? not making things too complicated, and realizing that you're going to get through that stress. No matter how long it takes, it will be over at one point. Okay? So try to keep your memory. For instance, time management for me. Um, can I stop time? No, I can't stop it. So when I'm sitting in my car and I'm late for my class and I'm feeling stressed, the one thing I can tell myself is I can't move this traffic any faster. I can't slow the time down. So I'm here, here and now. So I'm going to reduce my stress by accepting the fact that there's nothing I can do about that right now. So things that are out of my control, why do I want to be stressed about it? Okay, so once again, it's perception. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah. Okay, perception is key. I could say that word another 50 times today. I, I can't say it enough. Okay? Coping strategies. So how do you reduce stress? <clears throat> We're going to do exercise today. That's a great way to reduce stress, and I'll explain to you how that's going to work. Okay? <clears throat> but there are some coping strategies. There, think of it as the five R's. Okay? Rethink. So we talked about that just a minute ago. Rethink. So when I'm sitting in my car and I can't do anything about the time and I can't change the traffic and I can't change uh, how I'm going to get to work on time, I need to rethink that. I need to stop for a minute and say to myself, relax, the traffic's going to move when it moves and I'm, the time is going to be the time when I get here. So I have to rethink. Reduce. Okay. How do you reduce? Reduce the level of stimulation in your life. Okay, so one way of doing that is learning to say the word no. Okay, for all, for all the ESL people in here, no. Okay, that's the first word you guys should learn, no. <laughs> no, I cannot do that. Okay, because I have too much already. I'm a student. I have a lot of classes I have to go to. I cannot put one more thing on my plate. Okay. I know that all of us want to try to help others out. We all want to please others. We all want to try to do as much as we can in our lives. But sometimes you have to say no. Okay? Relax. Learning to do some breathing exercises can help us relax. Okay? Also, you can take uh, relaxing type classes. And in the handout, there will be a, a section on yoga and how it can affect your body. And even though that is exercise, it's, a, it's more of a relaxing exercise. Okay? And so we want to try to learn to relax. Okay? 
And again, that's perception. Reorganize. So, what does reorganize mean? Anybody can think about what reorganizing means? Lifestyle changes. For instance, uh, what would be an easy lifestyle change? How many of you like, how many of you park as close as you can to the door that you're going to go into? Some of you? A few of you? Okay. So one way of reorganizing would be to park the farthest away from the door. What does that do for you? It makes you walk to the door, doesn't it? Which gives you some exor exercise. So you have to try to think about making some lifestyle changes that can help you reduce the stress in your life. Okay? Um, reorganizing your life in a sense that, do you take five minutes out of the day for yourself? Okay, some of you saying yes, that's great. One thing I like to say to all my students is, if you don't have time for yourself, who do you have time for? Okay, so reorganize or make a lifestyle change in the sense that when you get home and your kids or your husband or boyfriend or, or, or girlfriend or wife come up to you, they want to talk to you right away. You say, no, no, I'm going to take five minutes. I'm going to go in my room, sit down, gather my thoughts, focus, and come back out, and we'll have a good talk. Okay? So lifestyle changes are important. We can all find ways of doing that. Okay? And lastly, release. Release is the key to uh, the hormones, getting rid of the hormones. So we want to release that stress. And that stress is made from the hormones that are created from stress. Okay? And so exercise is the best way of doing that. Going way back to the very beginning when I said fight or flight, and we had to do activity to get away from being eaten, well, we were doing exercise. We were either running or fighting, right? So in today's world, we need to do exercise because we don't run and we don't fight anymore, okay? But we can exercise, and that's a great way of, of um, releasing the hormones that are created in our bodies.